Hey everyone, so today we're going to continue with our financial model and utilizing Monte Carlo simulation. But in this video, we're going to look at a new model called the H model. So the H model is going to allow us to model two different growth rates as opposed to our original dividend discount model where we could only project out one growth rate. Now to just re remind ourselves of what the dividend discount model looks like here, all we're doing is we're growing some dividend at some future growth rate and discounting by some required rate of return R. And we can simplify it in this form called the Gordon growth model here. Now, if you wanted to model two different growth rates, you could still use this original dividend discount model or discounted cash flow model. And just for each G here, you would input a different type of growth rate. So for example, maybe for the next five years, you think that the growth is going to be 10%. And then over time, the growth rate in the long term will eventually move down to a slower, mature growth rate of 3%. But we could use a derivation of that model called the H model, which is essentially an approximation of using the dividend discount model. And we're assuming that we will have two growth rates that will change over time. So for example, we might have a short term growth rate that is maybe at a value of 10% and over time, it will linearly decrease to a more mature growth rate of say 3%. And why would we want to use this? Well, in reality, we don't always have one growth rate for a company, maybe for a very mature company like at Procter & Gamble, we may use a dividend discount model or a Gordon growth model. But let's say that we're trying to model a high growth company such as a Tesla, for example, and we believe that there will be a very high growth rate in the next 10 years. But over time, because of competitive dynamics and margins, companies coming away, eating away at margins, the growth rate of Tesla would slow down to a more mature growth rate of say maybe 3%. So let's take a look at this H model and what can we can derive from this. So if we look at this H model, there's two terms here. Essentially, this first term is just our Gordon growth model. This is modeling or valuing the long-term growth or the long-term value of this company that we're looking at. So for example, we have a G sub L here. That is our long-term growth rate. We believe in perpetuity or into the future for the long-term this company will grow at. This could be looked at as the mature growth rate. The short-term growth rate is represented by G sub S. So let's say that we believe for the company in question, let's say Tesla, there's going to be a 20% growth rate in, and again, we're using dividends, but we can derive that from earnings, 20% growth rate in earnings in the short term for the next 10 years. Now we have a new variable here called H. What is H? H is the half-life. And essentially, let's say for example, that you believe for the next 10 years, Tesla is going to have a high growth rate of 10% for the next 10 years. So a half-life is represented as just equal to N, which is 10 for that time period, divided by two. So H would be five in this case, in that example. And the second term, all this is doing is, this is representing the value of a company during the high growth phase, and it's approximating the growth of a linear decrease or a linear, linear change from a short-term growth rate to a long-term growth rate. So remember, short-term growth rate, that could be a high growth rate or it could even be a low growth rate. And we're linearly decreasing that towards its mature growth rate of G sub L. If we add these two, sum these together, we will have this form here and that will be the value of the company today. So let's try to model this. And to make things interesting, we're going to try to model the S&P 500. And using the S&P 500 as our example, we're gonna take in some, some, prox some inputs here. So we're gonna assume that dividends for last year is $163. I believe it was something close to that number, I believe earnings was, and if you include uh, buybacks, it's $163, the S&P 500 paid out in dividends. So we're going to use that, and we're gonna assume that the growth rate for the long-term mature growth rate is gonna be 2.5%. And the reason why I chose that, I didn't choose that arbitrarily is, I am assuming that growth over time is going to approximate or get close to GDP growth. So that will be our long-term growth rate for earnings for the S&P 500. And I'm gonna assume for now, the standard deviation is gonna be extremely small. So this will not vary, the variance will not vary much. And for the short term, I'm gonna assume for the next one, let's say, 
let's assume for the next one year, one year we're gonna have 0% growth, okay? And assuming, again, standard deviation is gonna be extremely low. And just for example's sake, I'm gonna use a required rate of return of 8%. In another video, I'll talk about how we can derive the required rate of return. But I'm using that as an example, and it's based off some historical observations. I'm gonna use 8%, and N, let's make N1 for now. So remember, N is the time period that we believe the short-term growth rate is gonna linearly increase or decrease towards the long-term growth rate. Therefore, H will be 0 0.5. So let's run this, and again, we're using a Monte Carlo simulation, and we're gonna assume the distribution will be normally distributed. So I'm using this function here, these two functions here for long-term and the short-term growth rates, and I'm gonna run this 10,000 different times. And essentially, all I'm doing here is I'm plugging these variables into this formula, and I'm doing it 10,000 different times. So Vs is for the short-term, value of the short term here, this term here, and VL sub L is the value of the long-term growth rate. And I'm pending it to this data Python list. So let's run this, see what happens. It's complete, and let's plot it. There we go. So you'll see it's approximately normally distributed. Let's look at the mean, standard deviation, the max, and the min. So you notice the mean, the average value here is about 3,000. Let's take a look at the median as well. So I'm gonna add that in there, np dot median is 3,000. So yes, so this does, does look to be a normally distributed because in a normal distribution, usually the median and the mean are exactly the same. So, and they're almost the same here. So that is the value and the range that we see this uh, given our model. And so how, how interesting is that? You know, so we can do, we can approximate different ideas and given the certain situation that we are in or believe that we are going to go into, maybe we think that we're going to have negative growth of maybe 5% for earnings, for dividends in the next year for the S&P 500. So what would that look like? So we can say negative 0 0.05. And I believe that's going to be for the next year. So let's model that out. Run that here. What will that look at like? There we go. Look how, notice how the range has changed. Now our, what is that? Now our median is 2,926, so much lower. So we, we, can, we can model this out in different ways. Maybe, for example, we think we're going to have, uh, this is going to take a longer time to get to our normalized GDP growth of 2.5%. Um, we're going to start off with negative 5%. But let's say that we think it's going to take mm, three years, okay? So we'll run that. Okay, so we believe that the value of the S&P 500 should be closer to 2,704. So let's take a look at what the current S&P 500 is today. So the current S&P 500 is 3,000 today. So you know, given that, we could think about our model as closer to the market is thinking that we're going to have a faster recovery going into the future. Maybe we believe that it's only going to take one year and, and that would be closer to what we are modeling here. So do you believe that? Do you think the market's correct? And so the power of this model is it gives you it gives you the tools to think about, okay, what does the market think? What do you think? Um, do you believe the market is correct in projecting this change in an N or, or the half-life? Or do you think the market is correct in this growth rate of 5%? There's a lot of different variables to look at, but we can try to understand how, what is the market thinking and what do you think as an investor the market is correct or not correct about? So that's the power of using financial modeling and Monte Carlo simulation. In our next video, I will look at something called using the three-stage um, three model, which will allow us to model other different growth rates, short-term, long-term, medium-term growth rates. And also we can change, remember we can also change the standard deviation and the variation of this growth. And maybe we're not exactly sure that it's gonna be negative 5%. And let me throw that in here just because we didn't do that. 
maybe we believe there's going to be a 2% change in standard deviation um, for, for the short term. And so, you know, 68% of the values are going to fall within that 5% range, right? Plus or minus 2, um, excuse me, plus or minus 2%. So let's run that. Let's just see what that looks like, just to see what could happen here. We might get some weird values. Okay, so we still think that we're gonna, it's going to be closer to 2,926, given that. Um, but you'll notice that the min and max have, have changed. So, and the standard deviation. So, now that you have this, these tools, um, if you like this video, please subscribe. Till next time, guys. Thanks.